Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be talking about this, the Chiggy, Chigi, um, AIO5 Play for BMW. Uh, they kindly reached out to me uh, about a month ago now and asked if I'd like to review this. And of course I said, yes. Firstly, an apology to Chiggy. Um, it, this arrived right about the time when my motorcycle went away to be uh, repaired. And uh, yeah, I've not had the op not had not had the opportunity to obviously test it uh, until now. So very sorry, very sorry for that. Um, but yeah, if I realize there's quite a lot of videos already about these out there, but um, hopefully I can make this re reasonably interesting. So if that sounds like something you'd like to see, uh, you know, stick around and we'll get to an unboxing and uh, some, you know, rider footage. <laughs> Let's do a little quick uh, unboxing of the unit. Not going to take too long on this because being the BMW, uh, the play for BMW edition, um, it's quite, you know, minimal in there anyway. So obviously we have the unit itself. Uh, actually quite, you know, weighty considering the, you know, size of it. Let's stick that out of the way. And then we have a single box inside, which I'm assuming will have the manual. That is it. We, we have the manual, which I'm not going to read. And some stuff in here. Should have had a knife handy, shouldn't I? So let's just quickly breeze through this. A nice few stickers there and also a little tag that I might stick on my keys and obviously uh, an included screwdriver to take this off which for now I'm not going to take off I'm going to put it straight on the bike. Um, I've already taken the liberty of using the included screwdriver to take off the little rubber um, the little rubber grommet on the bottom which exposes the USB and also the SD card uh, or TF card slot. Okay, so we're just going to go through the the initial setup. Um, I've sped this up because, in all honesty, it took long enough that you know watching it back in real time probably wasn't the best use of anyone's time. Um, but and I did have uh, a couple of issues getting it to join my Wi-Fi. So as you can see, I'm going through activating the unit. You know, setting the time zone. Um, I did end up having to use my mobile phone as a hotspot, which isn't the end of the world. Uh, but for some reason, although I have really good Wi-Fi signal in my shed uh, for my home Wi-Fi, it just wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, pick it up, you know, at all. Um, and I, I, it, it even failed to connect to my, you know, hotspot on my phone uh, at least once. So. Um, a little bit confusing. I don't have any other any other Wi-Fi issues, um, you know, in here. So um, I, d I did find when I took the Chiggy in to the house, I had to be literally in the same room for it to connect to my Wi-Fi, which I found a little bit odd. And I have, you know, fed that back to them. But as you can see, uh, we're finally on uh, my Wi-Fi hotspot. We're going through and downloading the update, which did fail on the first attempt. Whether that was whether that was a download issue or um, uh, due to you know some sort of you know signal issue, I'm not I'm not sure. Um, but there was only the, only the one update, and so now I'm just going through you know browsing around the user interface uh, and just you know getting myself familiar with it, changing the units from over to miles, uh, etc., and just going through the first pairing of my iPhone which uh, went completely and utterly flawlessly, as you would expect. Um, so yeah, that went absolutely fine. As you can see now, that's just, that's all pairing up. And yeah, we are into Apple CarPlay. 
So now we've done that, let's let's obviously get it on the bike and go through the actual user interface in a bit more detail. Let's go over the features of the unit. I'm not going to dwell too long on uh, all of the different options. There's there's a pretty comprehensive menu, uh, uh, a pretty comprehensive manual out there. Obviously, along the along the top, uh, which you won't be able to see from this angle, we have four actual physical buttons. Um, the first one brings you back to this screen, uh, the home screen. The second button switches you from the various different you know screens this screen the bike data screens and obviously apple carplay or android auto this option turns the screen off if you're not using it and this button locks the screen i'm not sure if you saw there it said it said lock uh, now you can press it to to unlock it um, or i believe you can swipe up that's the physical buttons this is the main screen of the unit so if you don't have your phone if you don't have your phone uh you know, obviously paired this is the screen that you will get when you when you first obviously boot boot up um quite simple speed a compass some tire 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 pressure info and also you know, time date, uh, sorry, time and some ride info. And also obviously this icon goes blue to signify we have some GPS. The second option along here is obviously for the ride in the, you know, bike in bike info. Not sure how much I'll use this if I'm brutally honest, because the TFT does a pretty good job of showing me that. Um, but we can see information like revs, speed, the tire, pressures, ambient temperature, you know, voltage, lean angle, etc., which is all read from the bike, I believe, potentially with the exception of stuff like the height and GPS location, as I'm pretty certain this has got a GPS chip inside it. Um, we can go over to uh, we can go over to the lean angle screen, which I may use if I'm on some twisty roads and I want to keep the TFT on this screen. Um, pretty self-explanatory. And we also have uh, more extended bike in information, which if I'm honest, I probably won't use. Um, however, it is there should you, should you wish. So from that info, we can hit the second button that then brings us back straight to the home screen, as well as the same for the home screen option. Now, if I go into here, we are straight into Apple. In, we are straight into Apple CarPlay, and I can, if I hit the second button, that's you know switches us into uh, the the bike info. A second press back to the home screen. A third press back to Apple CarPlay or I can go straight back to the home screen there. So using the wonder wheel uh, for anyone who has used a BMW Nav 6 um, or the BMW connected ride uh, uh, I believe you will be familiar with these icons here on the TFT one saying TFT one saying Nav. This won't show unless you have something in here which obviously tells the bike that it is uh, a nav and if i just press and hold the menu up option that flicks over to nav so we now have the control of the unit which you can confirm because this now shows up here um, that it is hopefully that's in focus that that it is on you know that it is on the nav mode so what i can do now is what I can do now is obviously control using the wonder wheel. So if I press the wonder wheel and hold it to the left, we go back to the to the Apple CarPlay to the Apple CarPlay screen. If uh, I push the wonder wheel to the left and hold it again, we go to the bike information screen. And if I just go to the right, we switch between the various bike info screens and if I press and hold it to the left again back to the home screen and press and hold it we're back into it into Apple CarPlay and if I scroll the wheel 
you know, down. As you can see, it's moving across the icons to the one that I want. Uh, so I can go into music by selecting that and pressing the wonder wheel to the right. That opens, you know, music. No, I'm not quite sure why I was playing that song uh, previously, but anyway. Uh, and, you know, obviously, if you don't wish to use the wonder wheel, you can obviously swipe and it is incredibly responsive. It did lag a little bit then, but but yes. So to the test ride with the Chiggy AI05 Play for for, BM, for BMW. Um, so far, the screen very, very sharp, very, very clear um, and very smooth. And there we have the lean angle. Wow, an amazing 19, 19 degrees of lean. I won't be joining MotoGP anytime soon, clearly. So uh, if I move the wonder wheel, we obviously select the different apps into Google Maps, and then we will go over to uh, search. So let's have a look at some favorites. Joe's Pizza. Trump Tower, wow. Let's, let's go for Spire Hospital. I went there recently uh, to have my knee looked at. So, start, off we go. Not had to take my hand off the handlebars once, which is great. I honestly thought that with my 47 year old eyes, I was gonna hate it. Um, personal preference, I would like it, would like it to be larger. Um, but that is perfectly readable. Uh, I can read the arrival time, everything like that. Um, I do think, however, if you were somebody who is just on that sort of cusp of uh, maybe needing maybe needing glasses uh, for driving, but you're not quite there yet, and you can still read road signs, etc., you may struggle a little bit. Okay, my route app working. Now I will say on this screen, because of the um, the way, because of the differences between the map view on my route app versus um, Google Maps, it is a little bit harder to read. So one quick thing I did want to mention, in terms of issues, um, aside from the initial issue getting it to connect to my Wi-Fi, I've had no issues while riding with this. Weirdly, in my shed, while I've been doing this you know, video, I have had several disconnections of Apple CarPlay, which is weird because I was out on the bike for probably two hours on the weekend using this and I experienced no issues whatsoever. Now I have seen on Facebook a couple of people have similar issues um, in, and in some cases reporting some pretty consistent disconnections and one thing that has been recommended that people do is if we go into this option here you will need to make sure your phone isn't paired or put it into airplane mode so it drops the connection. And if you go into that little cog icon, I have switched this over to the 2.4 gigahertz access point. Now that may help my issue. Um, however, it does also, I've noticed, obviously drop the 60 frames, the 60 frames a second uh, refresh rate for the unit. So it, the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, I, I assume Android Auto will do this as well. That will then not support the high frame rate, so you will lose some smoothness. So I am gonna feed that back to Chiggy. I'm, I am gonna switch it back and play around with it um, and just see. It may be that there are, you know, signals in my shed that are interfering with it, but I just thought I'd mention it because I don't think this option is particularly obvious because once you've paired, you then can't change that option. Uh, unless your phone is out of range, because obviously it all it 
automatically joins. So you either have to sort of switch it on and very quickly go into here before your your phone auto joins to the Jiggy. Um, I do think this this menu should be within the standard, you know, settings options. So just something to be mindful of. So final thoughts and opinions of this. The, uh, the AIO5 Play for BMW from Chiggy. What do I think of it? Will it be staying on my bike? Um, my brutally honest answers are as follows. Yes, it will be staying on the bike. Um, one thing I have been fairly critical of, you know, with it up until now is the screen size. Now, I've seen a lot of feedback regarding that. A lot of people wanting a larger unit. Um, I believe Chiggy are working on a six inch unit, but they have said that that won't be available for the BMW. Whether that's ever or at first, I'm not sure. Personally, I think that's a bit of an oversight. And considering the considering the thickness of the actual bezel around the unit um, and the amount of free space, I do think they could squeeze a six inch without making it look cumbersome or encroaching on the um, the the actual visibility of the TFT. So I really do hope that they reconsider that at some point. Um, why is it going to be staying when uh, I, f I feel like the screen size is a little bit on the, uh, the small side? Well, um, I've been using the Carpuri W702 up until now. I've done about 8,000 miles with it. Um, screen size, I love it. Um, do I wish the Chiggy had a similar screen size? Yeah, absolutely, I do. However, the upsides for the Chiggy um, are quite obvious. Uh, the screen is far brighter and sharper and smoother. Um, the over-the-air updates, I don't, I don't have one of the new, one of the newer Carpuride Pros, which I believe you can get over-the-air updates on. Um, but obviously with the Jiggy, you can. Um, and from what I've seen, they're pretty responsive and pretty quick uh, to bring out new updates. Um, so there is all of that plus the wonder wheel control. Now, I had the BMW Nav 6, I believe it was, when I got my first R1250 GS adventure back in 2019, uh, you know, thinking I was gonna use it for everything. And although that had wonder wheel support, I never really used it. Um, I don't know why, I just didn't feel like the user interface was intuitive. I, I think the only thing I ever really used used the Wonder Wheel for um, was zooming in and out. Um, now, arguably that is harder on the Chiggy because it's app specific. Um, and that is one criticism of, of Apple CarPlay. I, I haven't actually tried that yet on you know, Android Auto, but um, regardless of whether it's the, you know, Chiggy, the Carpy Rides in my, my Ford Fiesta, um, you know, zooming in and out is somewhat sort of cumbersome, <clears throat> excuse me, but using the Wonder Wheel does make it that little bit easier. Um, trying to reach forward and press, press, trying to press the screen and go into zoom mode and then pressing plus and minus um, can be a little bit more maybe direct. However, it takes your focus off, off it takes your focus off the road. Um, and I would much rather use uh, the Wonder Wheel. So yeah, those are my final thoughts. I would love a bigger screen. Please, Chiggy, reconsider um, that for the BMW uh, for the BMW edition. Thank you very much uh, to Chiggy for reaching out and asking me to review this. Um, it will be staying on my bike, and in the I'll put down put a link down in the description of the video uh, where you'll find uh, a discount code. Uh, I believe it's about five to 10% off uh, most, most of the products. Um, so yeah, thank you to Jiggy. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this, please consider hitting like and subscribe.
I'm really enjoying doing these the sort of videos and really appreciate all of uh, the feedback everyone's given me so far.